Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, robot bounded in circle. All right. So in this question, we have an infinite plane and a robot originally stands at zero, zero and faces north. So the robot can receive one of the three commands. So G is going to say go straight by one unit. L turns it to the left by uh, 90 degrees and R turns it to the right by 90 degrees. The robot performs the instructions given in order and repeats them forever. And make sure you understand that, that given a set of instructions, it repeats them forever. Okay, so return true if and only if there exists a circle in the plane such that the robot never leaves the circle. Okay, so this question by itself is actually not too hard, but there's one small thing you need to understand in order to solve this. So uh, let's just look at this example over here. So we have GGL, LGG. So what does that mean? So it goes straight, straight, then turns left and left basically turning 180 degrees and it goes straight again. And ultimately what is happening is it's starting somewhere, going somewhere and coming back to the start point. So that is very important. We want to have some sort of cycle. So by the ending of the cycle, our robot has to come back to the starting point. And if it does not do that, it's infinitely going to go in some direction. It is never going to come back to the starting point and it is not going to be in a bounded circle. So it is only going to be in a bounded circle when it returns to its starting point after a specific cycle. What do I exactly mean by that? So in order to do that, let's just uh, draw this out. Okay, so let's say over here, I have my starting point denoted in the color green. So that over there is my starting point. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the front by one. So uh, let's just write our, our command. So it's gonna be GR. Okay, so let's just first go by it and then we can see how we can use uh, a tuple or vectors in order to solve this. Okay, so first we're gonna move one unit. So we move and then we end up over here. Great, and now after this, what do we need to do? We need to turn to the right. So currently we're facing in this direction, but now when we turn to the right, we're facing this direction. Okay, so now we change the direction we're facing. So what are we gonna do now? So now what we wanna do is we wanna move uh, again, right? Because we're repeating these instructions infinite amount of times. So now we move by one unit and we end up over here. And right now we're facing in this direction, but again, we turn to the right, ending us uh, in this direction. So we turn 90 degrees, now we're facing this direction. Now same steps, we move one unit, end up here, and now we turn again, and now we move one more unit and we end up here. So what exactly happened? So by performing this four times, what happened is that after performing for a total of four times, we returned back to our original starting spot. We came back to our green spot. So now let's say we do this infinite amount of times. So no matter how many times you do it, we're always gonna stay in this certain area. We're gonna be performing the same thing over and over. And let's say there was like a circle over here, we're never going to go out of a circle. But let's say we had different instructions, right? Where uh, let's say we just had the instruction G. So what does that mean? So we start over here and we just keep moving unit by unit and there's no stop to where we go. So there has to be some sort of cycle. And in order to detect one of these cycles, we must be going around this at least four times. So once we go around it four times, we can know for a fact that there is a cycle. So if four times is going to be the maximum amount of times, but there could be a cycle in just one iteration. For example, look at this one over here. In just one iteration, there is a cycle, right? So just going through the instructions one time finds us a cycle. But the maximum amount of times that we could find a cycle is four times. But if there is not a cycle by four times, that means there is no cycle at all. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how we can actually do this in our program. So over here, we're going to have our starting point just as before. And do remember that we always start at the vector value zero comma zero and we're pointing at the north direction. So we're pointing upwards, okay? So let's just uh, create our own set of instructions and let's make it pretty simple so you can understand. So let's have GG, so we move up by two points. And then afterwards, we're going to have right, then go, then left, then go. So this should cover all of our cases and let's just go over it. Okay, so let's just go by one by one. 
And before we do that, we're going to have a direction vector over here. And this is going to be a tuple values of x, comma, y values, which we're going to add to our position values in order to show change in direction. Or to be more clear, to show change in position. All right, so we're at 0, comma, 0, and we want to move by one unit. So in this case, always our direction vector is going to start at 0, comma, 1. Since we're pointing north and 0, comma, 1 means that we're changing the y value by one unit. So we're going up by one unit. So now when we do go in the beginning, we're going to add this direction vector to our position vector. So what is that? It's just going to be 0, comma, 0 plus 0, comma, 1, giving us 0, comma, 1. So now we're over here at 0, comma, 1. Perfect. And now we do it again. So we add this direction vector again to 0, comma, 1, since that's our new position. And then we move up, leaving us over here. So currently, we are at 0, comma, 2 as position. And we use that, and we got there by adding the direction vector two times. But now we want to turn to right. So we can do that. And we can't use the same direction vector, right? Because this is for going up. We want to move to the right. So how can we do that? So in order to do that, what, what's going to happen is our direction vector. So whatever is on the right, the y value becomes the x value. And the y value becomes the negative x value over here. So negative 0, but obviously that doesn't, it's not a thing, so it's just 0. So 1, 0 is going to be our new direction vector. Okay, so now we have 1, 0, and that means that we've turned to a right. So now when we call our go function, which is right over here, we call go. And what happens when we call our go function is we do the same step. So we're at 0, 2, and we're going to add 1, 0. So that ends up with 1, 2. So now we have 1, 2, right? And that is our new position. So in that case, what happened is our new position is right over here, uh, since the y value stays the same. And the x value increases by 1 since we move to the right by 1 unit. So this over here is our new value, and that's perfect. So that's exactly where we want to be. And now let's perform one more step, and we're performing we're towards the right direction. But now we want to turn to the left. So we couldn't do the same thing, right? But now we're going to do the exact opposite. So what's going to happen is the x value becomes the y value, but it becomes negative. And in this case, it's just 0, so it's just going to stay at 0, 0, 1. And we're moving to the left, so now we do go, and we're doing 0, 1. So basically, first, when we turn to the left, we're actually pointing over here. And that means we're going up, and when you do 0, 1, we end up over here. Okay, so one more thing I just want to clarify is, what is the purpose of the negative? And I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but uh, let's say we have something like left, comma, left, comma, left, right? So we have three L's in a row. And how is that going to look like? So let's just uh, think about it first. So we're pointing here, then we turn to the left, and then we turn to the left, ending up here, and one more time ends up here. So just for the sake of this, let's just do two lefts instead. So L, comma, L, right? So just two lefts. Okay, and let's see how this looks like. So first, we're starting off at uh, 0, comma, 0, okay? And our direction, so this is our positional vector, and our directional vector is going to be uh, 0, comma, 1, right? So now when you turn to the left, what's going to happen is that we're going to end up with 1, comma, 0. And now again, when we turn to the left, what's going to happen is that we end up with 0, comma, negative 1. So we end up with 0, comma, negative 1. And now when we perform the go function, we're moving down by 1, which makes sense because currently we're pointing at north and we turn to the left. So now we're pointing to the left and we turn to the left again, pointing downwards. And it makes sense that our y value decreases when we go downwards. So that over there is the purpose of the negative, And it has the same implications when you're turning to the right. All right, so hopefully all of that did make sense. And I think the question is not too difficult once you understand the concept behind it. So now let's code it and see how that looks like. All right, so let's start off by defining our directional vector. So I'll just call it direction. And what was it in the beginning? So we're pointing north, so we want to move up. So it's going to start off with 0, 1. Pretty simple. OK, and now we're going to start uh, by defining our start value. So I'll just call it start. And this is going to be a tuple value of 0, 0, because that's where we're starting, and 0, 0, uh, x, y, OK? So now that we have this, uh, we're going to go inside of a for loop. So this for loop, um, we can just do for underscore in range 4. And the purpose of this is to repeat the steps four times. And like I said earlier, four is a maximum amount of times we need to do 
a certain set of instructions in order to figure out whether there is a cycle. Okay, so we're doing it four times. And over here, we're going to have our main logic. So over here, we're going to iterate through our instructions. And I'll just call it x. So for x in instructions, so over here, we're going to check what the instruction is. So if x over here is equal to g, we're going to do something. Okay, so that's one condition. Uh, if x is equal to um, left, that is going to be our other condition. And our last condition is going to be if x is equal to r. And that's the same as just saying else, but let's just do else if x is equal to r. Okay, so those are our three conditions. And one more thing, this should be else if. Okay, so now that we have these three conditions, we want to see how we move accordingly. All right, so let's start off with uh, when x is equal to g. So in this case, uh, our, this is the only time when our robot is actually moving. So how do we apply the move, right? We're applying the move uh, to our start vector, right? We're changing the position. And how are we changing it? We're changing it by adding the new, the direction value, right? So let's see how we can do that real quick. So we, we're first gonna add the x values, right? So the x value for start is whatever is at the zeroth index. And we're gonna add that with whatever for the direction vector is at the zeroth index. Now we're gonna perform the same steps for the y value. So this over here is going to be one since the y value is at the first index. So over here, we moved whatever it is. So now over here, we wanna do the rotation for the left or the right. So for the left over here, we're gonna change our direction as follows. So direction is going to equal, so it's gonna be a tuple values like uh, defined above. And the first value when returning left is gonna be negative, And this is gonna be direction one, right? So we're getting the Y value, making it the negative X value. Okay, and the Y value over here is gonna be the previous X value. So direction zero. Okay, perfect. And that is going to uh, change our direction uh, vector in such a way that we move to the left now or uh, whatever it is that once you turn to the left. Okay, and now that we have this, we have our last conditions, which is moving to the right. I'll just copy paste it over here. And the only difference is that this over here is not going to be negative, while this over here is going to be negative. And that's it. So that should be it. And at the very ending of this, uh, we're going to go outside of the for loop and we're going to return if our start value is equal to 0, 0. And that means that we did not move anywhere, right? We stayed in the same position. Uh, and this is supposed to be double equal since we're checking for comparison. All right, so I made a really dumb mistake. Uh, so you can't really change the values inside of tuple. So sorry about that. And so what's going to happen is let's just change it to a list instead. So we have this as a list over here, and this is also going to change the start value as a list since we can change the values of a list. Okay, sorry about that and submit. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And I do want to show you one more method. So over here, we can actually uh, use the same logic, but make it a slightly bit faster. So we're doing the same thing, but we're iterating over it four times, which sometimes is completely unnecessary. So now what we're going to do is we're going to iterate it through it only one time. And a smarter solution to this is after one iteration, if our direction vector still has a value of 0, 1, that means that we're still moving upwards, right? Then in that case, we're not going to have a cycle. So what we want to do is we want to check if it is not equal to 0, 1, because that's what we need in order for it to be true. Okay, and now that we have this, we can just submit it. And this is also accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.